everyone, I am Anna from Craft Me A Card and I'm more than happy to start these 10 one minute tips for you guys. The tip that I decided to share with you is one that I use almost every day. I like to create cards that have a lot of volume and dimension and that have embellishments that like to stand out. Some of these 3D effects may lay flat once inside the envelope, but when I am trying to put these cards inside their envelopes, it may be a little tricky and sometimes frustrating, only because as I'm trying to slide my card into its envelope, these embellishments tend to get caught up on the envelope. They fold and I have to go in with my finger and push them in and others get stuck and then they get bent and they can get damaged. So one easy solution for this is to simply grab a piece of paper the same size as your card front, make sure everything is in place exactly where you want it to be, place this piece of paper in front of your card, grab your envelope and slide your card in nice and easy. Once it's inside the envelope, you can remove the piece of paper and your card will be inside its envelope, nicely satched with all the embellishments as you place them. I hope you find this tip helpful and now I am going to go ahead and hand it over to Amanda who has another helpful quick one minute tip for you guys. Alrighty, take it away Amanda! Thanks, Anna. Awesome tip. I love it, girl. All right. My tip for you today is how to cut your paper straight almost every time. All paper trimmers are going to have a ledge at the top and at the bottom. That's your guide. Use that to your advantage. Push that paper up against the leverage and put a little bit of pressure on it. And the key is, is to run your blade against your paper. When we pull down on our blade, it moves the paper, causing it to not give us a straight cut. Now, for the longevity of your blade, you want to use both sides. So use that bottom leverage in your favor as well. But remember, go against your paper. Once you get the hang of it, you'll automatically know to start at the bottom, moving to the top or vice versa. All right, Brenda, you are next, girl. Can't wait to hear your tip. Catch! Thanks, Amanda. So if you are like me and you have lots of washi tape but don't know what to do with it, let me show you how you can make some cards. So this is what I made with some of my washi tape. I used it to make cards with it. I left most of them blank. So you could see where the washi tape is located, but you can embellish your cards with ephemera, stickers, you know, whatever you would like. This one, I added some here and some on the top. Very pretty um, washi tape. And here's another one. This one has some on the sides. And this watermelon one, this one I did embellish with some summer stickers. And here is the last one. This one has swans and it has clouds. On to you, Emily. Thank you, Brenda. Today, my tip is how I pre-stamp all my Julie Nuttings or any other stamps that I have that I constantly use. I stamp them ahead of time and I file them away in this uh, 12 by 9 a folder and I went ahead and added some tabs here as you can see I have Amberly I'll file her away Willow I will file her away and as you as you can see as well I have used her very quick and easy you can pull them out fussy cut whatever you need and you are ready to use your Julie Nutting stamps or maybe any other stamp that you have that you um, always use. You can go ahead and file them away in this folder. And I think it's a great tip to save some time. Thank you so much for watching. Now on to you, Jenny. Great tip, Emily. And for my tip, I'm going to share how I store my pre-colored images and bits and pieces of ephemera. So all I do is insert some pocket page protectors, which you can find at Staples or Hobby Lobby or Michaels, into an old binder, and then organize all of my fussy cut images, either by stamp set, theme, 
holiday or miscellaneous like these two here. And if I don't have time to fussy cut, I'll also trim the images down so they still fit in a pocket so that I can see what I have and it makes everything a little more accessible, easier to see, and keeps things from getting lost. So here's just an empty pocket and I'm just going to pop in some images that I recently cut out and it's as easy as that. And next up is Lori. So once I get these just popped in there, we'll see what she has for us. Here you go. Catch. Thanks so much, Jenny. So my tip is all about how I store embellishments. Usually embellishments come on a sticker sheet like this or in a package, and I'll keep what I'm currently working on in the desktop organizer. But once it's time to move on to the new stuff, I've got to clear out the old. And I like to keep things uniform and organized by storing embellishments in plastic name tag holders. I found these at Walmart in the office section. They fit most sizes of embellishments. So like these came from a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. I used a lot of them, but then the leftovers, I just cut individually and I'm going to place them right in here so it keeps the whole collection together. Then they have a clip on here so I can clip them to a rotating shoe tree which I also got at Walmart and that just keeps all my embellishments in one place. They're easy to see and they're easy to grab. That's my tip. All right now on to Michelle. Thanks Lori. What a wonderful tip. My tip for you today is how I store all of my extra die cuts and sentiments. I went and got a small toolbox that you would normally keep nails and screws in. In it, it has small sections, and in these sections is where I keep all of my die cuts and sentiments. And they're all organized according to theme. So for example, I have flowers, I have some little monsters, I have my critters, and then I also have all of my sentiments organized according to happy birthday, just because, thank you, you're amazing, etc. So the next time that you sit down to get a little bit, to get crafty, stamp out some extra critters, make a few extras, and keep them organized in a box like this, or even set aside an hour one day to make some. Keeping them organized this way, I can guarantee will make it quick and easy to find exactly what you need the next time. I hope that you found my tip helpful, and now it's on to you, Nina. I can't wait to see what you have in store for us. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Michelle. Nice toss. Okay, guys, for my tip today, I'm going to show you how I keep all my journal pages flat like this. I just started this project. Can you see how my page is so warped? So what I actually do, I spray the back of the paper generously with water. And then I just, this is a piece of acetate, a sheet of acetate, and I just place it in front of it before I close because I don't want to transfer my colors on the other page. I put another piece of acetate at the back since the back also has colors. And then I close my journal and put a couple books on top of it that are very heavy and I leave it overnight. I'm going to show it to you in the morning how flat it's going to be. Okay, guys, it's next morning. Let's see how our art journal page is doing. Okay, very flat. So you can guys do this as you're adding more layers or you can even do it in the ones that you previously finished. So to the next step, on to you, Yvette. Thank you, Nina, for another awesome tip. Here's my tip, cutting the dimension for your shakers or embellishments from Dollar Tree foam board. The trick is to only send it through your die cut machine with one pass. It's going to appear that it didn't cut through, but I, trust me it will. All you have to do is pop that out. This is gonna be for your shaker. Adhere your top, put some glue. I also did it in an intricate die so that you can see you can use it for that as well. And here I made the shaker using that Dollar Tree foam. Nothing's gonna fall out. So no more cutting six to eight layers of cardstock or trying to line up that adhesive foam so your bits don't fall out. And the best part is you get a huge sheet for only a dollar. Okay, Rebecca, it's your turn. Let's see what fab tip you have. Here, catch. Thank you, Yvette. My tip is a simple but effective one. You may be like me and have a pile of stencils in your craft area. Before I discovered this tip, I used to stack all my stencils together and they would get all tangled up in each other and they were difficult to see the various patterns. Then I discovered six by six page protectors, such as what you might use in a memory book. 
By taking the page protector and adding a square of black cardstock, I can now store two stencils per page protector. The stencils no longer tangle up. I can clearly see my stencil patterns, and luckily this size of page protector accommodates most stencils. I like to use a ring clip to hold them all together so I can hang my stencil collection on my pegboard within easy reach. It is a simple tip, but one of my favorites. I hope you found all of the tips in today's video helpful. Please be sure to check out all of our YouTube channels listed below. Thank you.